Eagles. Out of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, the Eagles, the MEAC regular season champions. They won the MEAC tournament over Norfolk State, and they will play UC Davis, the Aggies. Under coach Jim Les, defeating UC Irvine in the Big West Tournament Championship, their first ever tournament appearance. But I'll tell you what, that NC Central and UC Davis game, very interesting because both of these teams get after you defensively. Can't wait to see that one myself. All right, let's move on down the Midwest region bracket. Coach Jim Laranega's Miami Hurricanes, the number eight seed out of the ACC. They had NCAA tournament appearances, wins over North Carolina, Duke, and Virginia. The Miami Hurricanes with their 21 and 11 record on the year. Who will they face? Out of the Big Ten, the Spartans of Michigan State. Tom Izzo making it 20 straight NCAA tournament appearances. So the Michigan State Spartans will take on the Miami Hurricanes. Moving on to first round play in Milwaukee on Thursday and Saturday. The Cyclones of Iowa State. They beat West Virginia to win their third Big 12 tournament title in the last four years, and they will meet the Wolfpack of Nevada. Out of the Mountain West, they won the Big West regular season and tournament championship. And they were an outstanding team all season long. I spy another 5-12 upset in the making. I'm on the other side of that equation. Both excellent small ball teams, but I like the Cyclones. The point guard, Monte Morris, has been absolutely tremendous all season long. All right, moving on down. A couple of teams we've talked about a lot over the last couple of weeks. The Purdue Boilermakers, the third team out of the Big Ten and the number four seed in the Midwest region. Boilermakers won the regular season Big Ten championship and they bring Caleb Swanigan to the dance. They will play the Catamounts of Vermont out of the America East. Program record 29 wins on the year. So Purdue and Vermont meeting up in Milwaukee. Moving on to the games in Indianapolis on Friday and Sunday. The number two seed, the Louisville Cardinals, the 15 out of the ACC. Coach Rick Patino, his 21st NCAA tournament. And the Louisville Cardinals, well, they bring a lot to the table, don't they? They sure do. Tons of size, good depth. Donovan Mitchell has had a player of the year caliber year. The key for this team is, are the big guys going to be consistent scoring? If they are, this is a team that could get to the Final Four. All right, out of the Ohio Valley. Louisville will face the 15th seed Gamecocks of Jacksonville State. Coach Ray Harper in his first year takes the Gamecocks to their first ever NCAA tournament appearance. And Jacksonville State looking forward to Rick Pitino and the Louisville Cardinals. Yeah, a lot of red in that game. Yeah, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of points in that game. First one to 90 wins that one. Going up the ladder in the Midwest region, the Michigan Wolverines. Impressive down the stretch and in the Big Ten tournament. Won four games in four days to win the Big Ten tournament champion. And interesting seeing them as a seven seed. Respectable, maybe a hair low, but we saw Purdue, the regular season champ in the Big Ten, as a four seed. So that's an example of the committee valuing a regular season champion over a tournament champion. They seem pretty happy nonetheless. As well they should be. 24 and 11 on the year and 10 and 8 in the Big Ten, but they are headed to Indianapolis. Who will they face? Oklahoma State's Cowboys, the fourth team out of the Big 12. They ended the season winning nine of their last 13 games. Oklahoma State, 20 and 12 on the year. If you haven't seen Jawan Evans, you're in for a treat. This little guy is dynamic, extremely quick, can score a multitude of ways. But I like the momentum of Michigan, how they've been playing, and I picked the Wolverines to win that matchup. The celebration goes on at Oak State. Meanwhile, first round game in Sacramento, California on Friday. The Oregon Ducks, second team out of the Pac-12, number three seed. They want to share the Pac-12 regular season title with Arizona. Yeah, interesting seeing Oregon on the three line. Thought maybe they could get to the two. I'd wonder if the committee took into account the fact that Oregon lost its premier shot blocker and three-point shooter Chris Boucher to a season-ending ACL. I would bet that was at least a factor Without in questions, the discussion. Seth, I'm definitely, I would almost be ready to um, take your word on that. Oh, thank All right. you. First time for everything. Oregon will play the 14th seed in the Midwest, and that's the Gales of Iona out of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Coach Tim Clewis, they beat Siena in overtime in the MAC final. Their offense chalks up 90 or more points nine times this season. Yeah, they can put it in the basket. They shoot threes. They play a freewheeling style. We've seen this team in the tournament for the last five years, and they're always entertaining. And on the last level of the Midwest region, the number six seed, the Creighton Blue Jays. Number four team out of the Big East, Coach Greg McDermott. Creighton reaches the Big East Tournament Final before losing to top seed Villanova, but the Blue Jays are on their way to Sacramento, California. Question is, who do they meet? 
We just saw them in action today. The Rams of the University of Rhode Island out of the Atlantic 10. They reached the tournament for the first time since 1999. Getting the automatic bid in the A-10, but you see them as an 11 seed. So I do wonder then if they were in fact in the first four, had they lost that game today or even in the field altogether. That's pretty right. low. Let's take a look back now at the Midwest region and we'll begin at the very top. Third overall number one seed out of the South. The North Carolina Tar Heels, the number one seed they will play in the South, and this is a shock to some people. Well, it's a surprise to me because Duke beat North Carolina twice. Carolina has seven total losses to Duke's eight losses, but again, Clark, North Carolina won the ACC regular season title. Purdue won the Big Ten regular season title. I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to the chairman, Mark Hollis, about how they value that achievement because it seems it's pretty high. It seems like it's very high, and we wondered about where those teams would fall on the seed line. We kind of had a good idea of what the six to eight teams were for one and two. And now we know Carolina is right there and probably has been there for a bit. All right, let's take a look at who Carolina is going to play out of the Southwestern Athletic. It's Texas Southern, the number 16 seed. They won the SWAC regular season title as well as the tournament championship. The number eight seed in the South, the Razorbacks of Arkansas. Coach Mike Anderson never had a losing season in his 15-year coaching career. Arkansas 25 and nine. They will meet the ninth seeded Pirates of Seton Hall, the fifth seed out of the Big East, back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances since uh, P.J. Carlissimo way back in the early 90s. Now, the first and second round games in Milwaukee on Thursday night. The Minnesota Golden Gophers are the number five seed. Coach Richard Pitino, the 2017 Big Ten Coach of the Year. And the Gophers are in celebration mode. Great turnaround on the year. Great turnaround for Richard Patino. Struggled last year, and this team has played at a high level most all season long. Let's see how they feel about this. They will play the number 12 seed Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee. They ran through Conference USA, winning 17 of 18 regular season games. The regular season championship won the tournament title. They've done a lot. Beat Michigan State last year in that shocking game. They returned a lot of those players out of the great transfer of Corey Williams. I spy another five. 12 upset. Blue Raiders are going to win this game. Little Tennessee, 30 and 4 on the season. Moving on down to the number four seed, the Bulldogs of Butler, the number six team out of the Big East, a third straight NCAA tournament appearances. They handed Villanova two of their three regular season losses. They will meet the Eagles of Winthrop. The number 13 seed coming out of the Big South. They won a share of the Big South regular season championship and then won the conference title. So, let's continue to move on now. First round games in Indianapolis on Friday. The Kentucky Wildcats, the number two seed out of the SEC. They won the SEC regular season and tournament titles. They ran off 11 straight wins coming into the tournament. Malik Monk, the SEC freshman year, they got a lot going for them. Good ball team. Look good today winning that title. All right, who will Kentucky play? The number 15 seed out of the Horizon League, Northern Kentucky. Coach John Brannon, Horizon League Coach of the Year, and their NCAA tournament appearance is their very first. Congratulations to the Norse of Northern Kentucky. Let's continue up the ladder. The number seven seed in the South is the Dayton Flyers at 24 and seven on the year. Coach Archie Miller, school record 15 conference wins on the year. Their second straight regular season Atlantic 10 title this year, and they will meet the Shockers of Wichita State out of Missouri Valley. Very surprised, very surprised to see Wichita State as a 10 seed. I thought they could get maybe up to the eight line. Uh, shows to me that the committee valuing their RPI breakdown as opposed to some of these other performance metrics where the Shockers have been in the top 10 and 20 all season. All right, rounding out the South region. First round games in Sacramento, Friday and Sunday. The number three seed, UCLA Bruins, Coach Steve Alford commandeered a school record 28 regular season wins this year. Potent offense led the nation in scoring field goal percentage and assists. There's not a team that scores the ball easier than the Bruins and Lonzo Ball has been the catalyst of it all. This is a good spot for the Bruins. I see them perhaps I see them coming out of the South. They will meet the 14th seed Golden Flashes of Kent State. They won the MAC tournament title and a trip to their first NCAA tournament since 08. And then at the very top, the number six seed in the South region, the Bearcats of Cincinnati. 
Cincinnati reached the American Athletic Conference Tournament Championship game before losing to SMU, but they are at number six, and they will take on the winner of the first four game in Dayton between Kansas State's Wildcats, the fifth Big 12 team into the tournament, and Wake Forest Demon Deacons. So we now know that Providence, USC, Kansas State, and Wake Forest were your last four at-large teams in. If you were a bubble team hoping to get into that first four, you're not very happy right now. because NBA and its corporate champions, the fourth overall number one seed is Gonzaga to be playing in Salt Lake City on Thursday, March the 16th. Gonzaga's Bulldogs out of the West Coast, 18 straight NCAA tournament appearances, and Mark Few, West Coast Conference Coach of the Year. Great choice by the committee. Couldn't, couldn't agree with this one more. So at 32-1 and 17-1 and and in the West Coast Conference, let's see who they take on. They will meet the Jackrabbits of South Dakota out of the Summit League. They won the Summit League Tournament Championship, finished with a record of 18 and 16 on the year, but that automatic bid goes to the Jackrabbits. Now, the number eight seed out of the West. There they are, the Northwestern Wildcats. 78 years in the making. Their first ever NCAA tournament, 23 wins, a school record. There is a well-deserved celebration. Hey, what took you guys so long? <laughs> Welcome to the party. Enjoy. I'm going to yeah, first round round time I've ever applauded on a selection yep, show. No Welcome. doubt about it. Welcome. That is special. Congratulations to the Wildcats. Now, who do they meet? The fifth seed out of the SEC, the Commodores of Vanderbilt. Coach Bryce Drew's squad. Most losses by an at-large team in NCAA tournament history. They come in at That's 19, a healthy number for them, isn't it? I'll tell you what, we talk about him as a bubble clock, but strength, a nine seed. of schedule, though, I think, is part of what drove that type of seed. Congratulations to the Commodores. What a matchup in that 8-9. That yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, it Two will coaches' be. sons. That's right. That's right. You notice it was selfie time in Evanston, Illinois. All right, first <laughs> round games in Buffalo, New York on Thursday and Saturday. Saturday, the number five seed, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Another team out of the ACC, the eighth. Coach Mike Bray's team reached the ACC tournament final before losing to Duke. So the Fighting Irish are there at 25-9, and nine, and they will meet the number 12 seed, Princeton Tigers. Out of the Ivy League, Coach Mitch Henderson squad, first time they had a league tournament, and they beat Yale to qualify. Continuing on down the ladder now, number four seed. The Princeton Tigers in celebration <laughs> mode. Nice to be young. <laughs> All right, the number four seed in the West region, the Mountaineers of West Virginia. Made a trip to the Big 12 Tournament Championship game. Coach Bob Huggins' squad went 26-8 and eight on the year, and they will meet the Bison of Bucknell out of the Patriot League. Two straight regular season Patriot League titles in two years at Bucknell. Be a tricky matchup for West Virginia. Press Virginia likes to turn you over and get offense that way. This Bucknell group, very good with the ball and very versatile offensively. They come into the tournament winners of 14 of their last 16 games. Now, continuing on, Salt Lake City on Thursday and Saturday. The number two seed in the West, the Wildcats of Arizona at 30-4 and four on the year. They share the regular season Pac-12 title with Oregon. They beat the Ducks in the Pac-12 tournament title game. Congratulations to the Wildcats. Who do they meet? The number 15 seed from the Big Sky, the Fighting Hawks of North Dakota. North Dakota won the Big Sky regular season and tournament championships. They come into the NCAA tournament winners of 10 of their last 11 games. Let's move up the ladder. The Gales of St. Mary, the number seven team. They won 20 games for a 10th straight year. 28-4, they will meet VCU. We saw the Rams earlier today, the Atlantic Tournament Final. They lost to Rhode Island, but out of the Atlantic 10, they're the third team out of the A-10. It's the Rams going up against St. Mary's. And first round game in Orlando, Florida on Thursday. The Seminoles of Florida State are the number three seed. 
in the West region. Leonard Hamilton's team returns to the NCAA tournament after a four-year absence. A lot of people like this Florida State team. And with good reason, a deep athletic team that has scoring in the backcourt. Um, Dwayne Bacon is the guy who makes it happen for them offensively, but a very, very good basketball team and a hard team to prepare for because of the size and athleticism. Talk about making things happen. Look who they play. The Eagles of Florida Gulf Coast University, the number 14 seed out of the Atlantic Sun. They won the Atlantic Sun regular season and tournament championship. So we get Florida Gulf Coast playing Florida State in Orlando. What are we to do to deserve that? Another upset special for you, Clark Kellogg. I know you love these Eagles. Yes, I like I do. them to beat Florida State. I'm with State. you there. And I think they're going to the Sweet 16. How about that? You take all your upset specials to yeah, the Sweet 16. Don't, everybody don't use me to fill out your brackets, please. I'm having fun up here. All right, let's round out the West region. The number six seed, the Terps of Maryland, the seventh Big Ten team into the tournament. Mello Trimble, first team all Big Ten selection. He averages 17 points a game. He spurs the Terps, and they will meet the Musketeers of Xavier out of the Big East. Oh, we always torture that bubble team in the 11th.